so what is it about Halloween that gives us permission to pretend we're someone else, we're something else? When I was a little girl, the big cardboard box that served as a dress-up box was one of my favorite things to play in. I could imagine a world of possibilities, of personalities, and of play. And obviously, I still love to dress up, whether it's for Maple Sunday or a tour of the Biltmore in Asheville. I just love um, the dramatic and putting some attention and time into what I wear. In these intervening years between that child who loved the dress-up box and today, I lost touch with my creative side. I think somewhere along the, the line, I got the message that I wasn't an artist, that that wasn't okay to be an artist. And um, it began to seep out into my car. So um, after a trip to Senegal, I, uh, I came back home and I found my 2005 Subaru Impreza pretty boring. So I started bejazzling it with its own chandelier and wings and dashboard diva. And, uh, and then and as my car began to become shinier and more expressive, it, it, it sort of translated into my clothes and I began to dress more expressively and um, more inventively and began to get a little bit more comfortable with this artistic side of myself that I had repressed. And so the WMPG woo -woo, uh, <laughs> fundraiser fashion show uh, came along and I thought what a great opportunity to create a rose petal shrug and a blue wave cape. And at around the same time I was becoming more comfortable in my own body, moving more and beginning the practice of Nia, all which brings me to this cow head. Um, I decided to take a continuing studies class at Mecca, a painting class. I had been told my art was naive, childish, and I thought that would mean I would never be a real artist. Nevertheless, I took this class at Mecca, and I also took a sewing class there, and um, created probably my, my only uh, creation from a pattern, uh, I call it the confessional. <laughs> From that point, I started to get more public with my um, artistic side and uh, volunteer at community events like this one for the East Coast Greenway face painting. And kids are so great at responding to play and being in the moment with it, as I'm sure anyone out here can attest to. Um, that little girl who loved the dress-up box at Halloween and really year-round, began to dress up for any old occasion, like a, a 10K um, in the fall. Here we are again at Halloween with people trying on different personalities and I'm dressed up just to bring a smile to the faces of the other runners. And most recently, as Rafi said, at the uh, Sugarloaf Marathon, I had the pleasure of running up behind fellow runners saying, no, that's not a ringing in your ears, that's my dress which um, got them to laugh and kind of loosen up and relax a little bit. I don't know why we as adults take ourselves so seriously so often. It's, um, it's, it's kind of, it's fun to put a crown on someone to get them to loosen up. It, it can turn just about the most serious adult into a, a wonder-filled, smiling child again. I feel like we're empowered in crowns. I like to make crowns and bring them places and put them on people's heads. Um, I think, I think it, 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 you know, it helps people loosen up and, and kind of stand taller in their own bodies and, and uh, kind of find their inner majesty. And it's just fun to create. Um, for a couple years, I participated in another community great organization, Partners for World Health, so maybe some of you did as well, their project Blue Wrap. Um, I created and modeled some of my own designs um, for their annual runway show. And uh, they, they do great work um, delivering medical supplies to countries in need, sort of supplies that would go to waste otherwise. And I would have no idea what I would create until I'd start just playing with the Blue Wrap, and maybe using a jar lid to create new shapes or weaving with strips. And uh, I think that's such an important part of the creative process that we don't know what we're going to create until we begin, much like writing or any, or cooking. 
It's just giving ourselves the gift of time to explore and see that. I consider dressing as a creative outlet and uh, an expressive one. Um, I take Stevie Wonder's words to heart in that song, if, if it's magic, if it's special, then with it, why aren't we as careful? Making sure we dress in style, posing pictures with a smile, keeping danger from a child. And I think about what's dangerous and what was a danger to me was being told, you know, you're not artistic or you're not an artist or you can't be. And I think it's important to keep that inner critic in check and be mindful of the messages we send ourselves and our, our children. So you've been looking at some pictures of uh, L.L. Bean catalogs that I transformed into a three-piece formal outfit uh, for the main, uh, main disability deaf services trash to fashion show. And you can just imagine the little girl who loved dressing up, um, coming on stage and being applauded by this deaf community and thanking them and really feeling like she'd come full circle with her own creative artistry. And so my message for you tonight is that the world needs you, your community needs you, your inner ex-baby, inner child needs you to play and embrace your art. Art becomes you, so become your art. Thank you. Woo!